Just like Jodie Foster's character in the movie Contact, scientists have come across a mysterious signal from a galaxy far, far away. Scientists have spotted the farthest galaxy ever. Shining only 300 million years after the Big Bang, it may be home to the oldest stars in the universe, or a supermassive black hole. A team of international astronomers, including scientists from the Center for Astrophysics at Harvard and the Smithsonian Institution, have discovered the most distant astronomical object ever, a galaxy. The galaxy candidate, named HD1, is around 13.5 billion light-years away and is described in the Astrophysical Journal. Now, scientists have begun to hypothesize about the nature of this galaxy. The team has two suggestions. HD1 may be creating stars at an astonishing rate and may even be home to Population 3 stars, the universe's very first stars, which have never been spotted before. Alternatively, HD1 might be home to a supermassive black hole the size of our Sun. So, what do we know about this newly discovered galaxy? And how can this discovery shape our understanding of the cosmos and the Big Bang Theory? Let's break it down. Our cosmos is filled with galaxies which are enormous clusters of stars. But just how many galaxies are there exactly? It seems impossible to try to count them. One problem is that there are so many of them. When the number gets into the billions, it takes a long time to add them up. Another problem is that our tools aren't as good as they could be. For the best view, a telescope needs a larger aperture, the diameter of the main mirror or lens, and to be above Earth's atmosphere where the air doesn't distort the view. The Hubble Extreme Deep Field, or XDF, a picture made by putting together 10 years worth of photos from the Hubble Space Telescope, may be the best example of this. NASA says that the telescope looked at the same small part of the sky over and over for 50 days. If you covered the moon with your thumb at arm's length, the XDF area would be about the size of a pinhead. The XDF revealed thousands of galaxies, both nearby and far away, by collecting very faint light over many hours of observation. At that time, it was the deepest picture of the universe that had ever been taken. So, if that one small spot has thousands of galaxies, just think how many more there could be in other places. While estimates among different experts vary, an acceptable range is between 100 billion and 200 billion galaxies, said Mario Levio, an astrophysicist at the Space Telescope Science Institute in Baltimore, Maryland. The James Webb Space Telescope is expected to reveal even more information about early galaxies in the universe, according to the Astrophysical Journal. Going Deep Levio says that the Hubble Space Telescope has done a good job of counting and estimating galaxies. When the telescope was first put into space in 1990, its main mirror had a flaw that was fixed by a shuttle in 1993. Hubble also had a number of upgrades and maintenance visits before the last shuttle mission there in May 2009. In 1995, astronomers pointed the telescope at a part of Ursa Major that seemed to be empty, and they watched for 10 days. Weber State University says that the result was a single frame with about 3,000 faint galaxies some of which were as dim as 30th magnitude. The North Star, also known as Polaris, is about second magnitude. This group of pictures, called the Hubble Deep Field, was the farthest into the universe that anyone had seen at the time. Astronomers did the experiment twice, once before and once after the Hubble telescope's instruments were updated. In 2003 and 2004, scientists made the Hubble Ultra Deep Field. It showed about 10,000 galaxies in a small spot in the constellation Fornax after a million-second exposure. In 2012, scientists used the telescope to look at a part of the ultra-deep field with upgraded tools. Even in this smaller area, astronomers could still see about 5,500 galaxies. This is what scientists call the extreme deep field. Overall, Hubble shows that there are about 100 billion galaxies in the universe, but this number is likely to rise to about 200 billion as space telescope technology improves. Counting stars Estimating the number of galaxies is the same no matter what tool is used. You can take the part of the sky that the telescope can see, in this case Hubble. Then, you can figure out how many galaxies are in the universe by comparing the small piece of sky to the whole universe. This is assuming that there aren't big differences in the universe, that it's all the same, Livio said. We have good reasons to think that's what's going on, 
That is the main idea in cosmology. Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity is where the idea came from. Einstein said that gravity changes the way space and time work. Scientists, including Einstein, tried to figure out how gravity affected the whole universe once they knew this. NASA said, the easiest assumption to make is that if you looked at the universe with bad enough eyesight, it would look about the same everywhere and in every direction. That is, when you look at the universe as a whole, the matter is the same everywhere and doesn't change. The name for this is the cosmological principle. The cosmic microwave background, or CMB, which is radiation left over from the early days of the universe after the Big Bang, is an example of how this principle works. Astronomers have used tools like NASA's Wilkinson Microwave Anisotropy Probe to find that the CMB is almost the same no matter where they look. Would the number of galaxies change? By seeing how fast galaxies move away from us, we can figure out how old the universe is. It is about 13.82 billion years old, but as the universe gets older and bigger, galaxies will move farther and farther away from Earth. This will make it hard to see them through telescopes. The universe is getting bigger faster than the speed of light. This doesn't break Einstein's speed limit because the universe is growing, not objects moving through it. Also, the expansion of the universe is getting faster. This is where the idea of the observable universe comes into play. This is the universe that we can see. Levio said that this means there will be galaxies we can't see from Earth in a billion to two billion years. Levio said, we can only see light from galaxies whose light has had time to reach us. It doesn't mean that's all there is in the universe. So, this is the definition of the universe that can be seen. Galaxies change too, as time goes on. The Milky Way is headed for a collision with the nearby Andromeda galaxy. In about 4 billion years, the two galaxies will join together. In the future, other galaxies in our local group, which is made up of the galaxies closest to us, will join together. Levio said that if people lived in that future galaxy, they would see a much darker universe. Civilizations began then, and there would have been no way for them to know that there were 100 billion galaxies in the universe, he said. They wouldn't be able to see the growth. Most likely, they wouldn't know there was a Big Bang. What about other universes? Some theories say that as the early universe grew, different pockets broke off and became their own universes. These different places could be growing at different rates, have different kinds of matter, and follow different rules of physics than our universe. If these other universes exist, there could be galaxies in them, but we don't know for sure right now. So, if you think about other universes, the number of galaxies could be more than 200 billion. With the launch of the James Webb Space Telescope, astronomers will be able to get a better idea of the number in our own universe. Hubble can look at galaxies that came into being about 450 million years after the Big Bang. Astronomers think that the James Webb Telescope will let them see as far back as 200 million years after the Big Bang. Now, coming back to the farthest galaxy. It can be hard to answer questions about the nature of a source that is so far away, says Fabio Pacucci, lead author of the MNRAS study, co-author of the Discovery paper in APJ, and astronomer at the Center for Astrophysics. It's like trying to figure out what country a ship is from its flag while you're far away on land and the ship is in the middle of a storm and thick fog. One might be able to see some of the flag's colors and shapes, but not all of them. In the end, it's a long game of analyzing and ruling out scenarios that don't make sense. Under ultraviolet light, HD1 is very bright. To show this, Pakuchi says, some energetic processes are going on there, or better yet, they were going on some billions of years ago. At first, the scientists thought HD1 was a typical starburst galaxy, which is a galaxy that is making a lot of stars quickly. But when they figured out how many stars HD1 was making, they got HD1 would be making more than 100 stars every year, which is a very fast rate. This is at least 10 times higher than what we usually see in galaxies like these. The team began to think that HD1 might not be making normal stars at that point. The very first stars that formed in the universe were bigger, brighter, and hotter than stars today, says Pacucci. If we assume that the stars made by HD1 are these first stars, or population 3 stars, it would be easier to explain how it works. In fact, population 3 stars can make more UV light than normal stars, which could explain why HD1 is so bright in the UV range. However, 
A supermassive black hole could also explain why HD1 is so bright. As it eats up huge amounts of gas, the area around the black hole may send out high-energy photons. If that's the case, it would be the oldest supermassive black hole we know of by a long shot, since it would have been much closer to the Big Bang than the current record holder. HD1 would be like a big baby in the delivery room of the early universe, says Avi Loeb, an astronomer at the Center for Astrophysics and co-author of the MNRAS study. It beats the record for the highest redshift of a quasar by almost a factor of two, which is an amazing feat. HD1 was found after the Subaru Telescope, Vista Telescope, UK Infrared Telescope, and Spitzer Space Telescope looked at it for more than 1,200 hours. Astronomer Yuichi Harakane from the University of Tokyo found the galaxy. He says that it was very hard to find HD1 among more than 700,000 other objects. HD1's red color fit the expected features of a galaxy 13.5 billion light years away surprisingly well, and when I found it, I got a little bit of goosebumps. The team then used the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array, or ALMA, to make more observations to confirm the distance which is 100 million light years farther than GNZ11, the galaxy that holds the record for being the farthest away at the moment. Soon, the research team will look at HD1 again with the James Webb Space Telescope to confirm how far away it is from Earth. If the calculations that have been done so far are right, HD1 will be the most distant and oldest galaxy ever found. With the same observations, the team will be able to find out more about who HD1 is and see if one of their theories is correct. A few hundred million years after the Big Bang, a black hole in HD1 must have grown from a huge seed at a rate that has never been seen before. Once again, it looks like nature has more ideas than we do. That pretty much wraps this video up, guys. Thanks for watching. So, what are your thoughts about the shocking discovery of the farthest galaxy? Share with us in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to this channel with a bell notification if you enjoy watching our content. We upload some awesome stuff here which you will most certainly enjoy. Hit a like on this video and leave a comment below. See you guys in the next one.